Well, it's definitely elephant mating season, that much is for sure. Yeah, pretty high rank game. Viper versus the Muslim. Let's go. And look what they're playing as well. Altai. Viper playing as the Delhi. Meanwhile, the Muslim on his infamous Mongols. Okay, you've got my attention. Especially considering that Viper has been struggling a lot on Altai recently. Maybe that's kind of biased because I watch a lot of Kazva Viper on Altai. But I have noticed that he tends to kind of get exploited on this map a lot. And that was admittedly on the older generation with a little bit less tree lines. But it wasn't even about the tree lines. I feel like usually the issue I've seen for Viper is in the like mid game. Uh, the way that he tries to gain ground usually get backfires quickly. I feel like his opponents are very good at understanding when they can condense their base and when they can flow out. And I'm curious to see if the Muslim has that kind of read as well. Like playing as the Mongols, it is that type of Civ that can do that. Especially if he gets a network of outposts now. Kind of curious to see what Viper's strategy is going to be. Usually playing towards his sacred sites. And he could easily get his hands on two sacred sites in this game. We'll just have to see how the openings work though. Um, trying to think actually the last time I watched Viper play Delhi in pub. I feel like he doesn't do it that frequently. Just to highlight by the way. At the time of recording this is your second or third place on the leaderboards. The only person higher than them on the ranked leaderboards right now is Beastie Cutie at 1926 ELO. You want to know what's more crazy? These two badasses right here are only four ELO apart. 1,826 ELO for the Muslim. Meanwhile, Viper, 1,822. Difference in win rate, though. As the Muslim is sitting at 82.5%. Viper at 78.4%. But Viper with 39 games more than Benny Boy. Mm. In fairness, though, let's be real. This isn't even the Muslim's account. Or rather, this isn't his main. The one I just described is his main one, Liquid Dr. Muslim. This is his second one. So you want it to be even more interesting? Right now, Viper on the leaderboards is the meat in a bull boy sandwich. As he's got that De Muslim account, four ELO above him. And then below him, 1,676 ELO is this account. With 124 games already played by De Muslim. Like, this dude is hard on the grind right now. And what I love is if De Muslim loses with this account, then he loses the number two spot in the world to Viper. <laughs> So let's check on openings, because Viper, I feel like the last time I watched him play Delhi in a pub game, he done uh, an interesting build, shall we say. I believe it was the the Tower of Victory build. I believe that was the Divine DFP game, where Divine DFP just cheesed camels. I'm not sure we're going to see a Tower of Victory this time around. We are, however, going to see the opening of the racks, which will allow him to play out and look to set up outposts on the central out on the central sacred site. But also, interesting enough, this is going to counter out what's coming from, from Dimuslim. I don't know if Viper spotted this outright, but it's a horseman push. And we don't see that that frequently. Usually when someone goes to an outpost rush, it's not with horsemen, it's with spearmen. That means the spearmen are kind of answered by the horsemen. Scout's going to chase away the villager. Nice play there. Viper could benefit from pushing up to four spearmen here. It's definitely going to pay for itself with what you're up against, but nice trade out there. So Demuslim will be able to get rid of one. Almost loses the Khan, though. Just about able to wiggle his way out of that one. And now I want to see if Viper pulls a Villager, because getting an outpost down the center here could just dictate the flow. It could deny a lot of rush opportunities for the Mongol player and force Demuslim to just fall back for a Castle Age. Castle Age would be frustrating because he can't rush it. He has got the Deer to start off with, so this is good. But long term, this Uvi placement is going to be very frustrating for his sheep. So I think for the Benny Boy, it's more about playing like quick castle and then dominating the first five minutes. I don't think he wants this game to drag out. It's interesting as well because usually the Delhi function the same way, right? They don't necessarily want the game to go hyper late into Imperial. Um, but they can benefit from dragging out the feudal. We'll just have to see if Viper's able to do that. Meantime, Scout's being a little bit of a pain in the ass. Viper. This did slow down his tech up. Looks like Ben will be able to beat him to the punchline. Makes sense as well. Like, he's competing with the berries because he's gathering off of deer. And also, like, the gold mining. It seems like he went on that sooner compared to Viper. But I love this. Scholar pulled out. Efficient use of your initial troops. Understanding that your opponent can't really, like, kill you off quickly, right? Because a level one can't. It's pretty cool. I think this is another thing that can make the Delhi kind of ridiculous and oppressive in the game as well at the moment. It's like your ability to do this, like the head patterns are just kind of busted in my eyes. 
Uh, the fact that you can just whip scholars out and heal like this. And remember, like, usually you're going into the Dome of Faith, so you get those scholars cheaper. You're able to have more flexi in your economy. Also, compared to, say, another sieve that gets hands on a healing unit early, which would be the HRE, you don't build these units out of your TC, so you don't interrupt your villager production. But meanwhile, you can benefit a lot from them. Yes, you don't get the whole inspiration the same way the HRE do, but you can heal any damage done to early units. Of course, they boost up your tech rates. They allow you to go out and capture sacred sites. They do so much for you. And that's why we aren't ever really going to see the Tower of Victory. The only person we've seen build Tower of Victory at the moment is B with the experimental builds. But usually you're just always going for the Dome of Faith. Because at the highest level of play, saving 75 gold each time on a unit that is critical to any of your builds, which Skulls practically always are, is such a huge deal. Wants them wrap around. It's going to force the Villies back. So that'll slow down the food gathering, but you can see Viper's already on his way up. In the meantime, he does deny the outpost going up. So forces Ben all the way back here. Sacred Sight Control will not be given over so freely by the snake. Right now, Sanctity, obviously not available because of this delayed timing. Usually Viper would have been, most Delic players would have been up in Feudal by now. You can see he's already researched everything he could. He's now waiting on getting Feudal. So he can continue into the Sanctity and then move forward into the All-Seeing Eye. You're not really caring that much about All-Seeing Eye, by the way. It's just the fact that you're probably going to be around in Feudal for longer than three minutes. Nice wall in as well, like this from Viper. Khan is going to be a pain in the ass, but... He can easily pull another Spearman to complete this. It's all about the Sacred Sites now. And the cool thing about doing this against the Mongols is it forces them to be present. Now that you're playing Delhi this way, the Mongol player can't play towards his biggest advantage, which is Castle Age. You can't brush that up. Instead, he has to play Feudal Aggression. And if you naturally just get control of these Sacred Sites, you're just winning, right? You're getting better resource gathering than your opponent, naturally. And although Yam Speed does help a little bit with the Mongols, it doesn't really compare to 150 gold passive in your eco per site. Something that Viper should be able to get his hands on at least one off. As you can see, he's already moving a spearman out on the south side to ensure that, as all attention is on the center. I like this play out of the Muslim, though. Outpost first to deny equity. And we'll definitely be able to do that. Also, double benefit, right? Not only are you denying the win condition of Viper, you're also now getting the Yam movement speed extended forward so you can raid more actively. Spearman just running around in circles is going to go down there. It looks like we are getting the horseman switch up. Efficient production means that this stable is functioning as two. So Viper will be able to outmass his opponent now. As right now, lack of stone and only one stable means it's going to be very hard for the Muslim to build a big army quickly. Also, everything he's doing is being scouted out because of Viper just snitching with a scout around the back here. A scout that is noticeable by the Muslim but hasn't been targeted yet. And now look at the info he just got, the Magadai. Wow, that's a, that's a tough one. That is actually a tough one now. The Muslim, I don't think he wanted to reveal it this soon. He'll at least punish the scout for the info gained. But Viper's happy with that. That's an important piece of info fed back, right? That's a heavy investment now by the Muslim. It means he's going to be hanging around in feudal a lot longer. We're going to have to see how Viper responds to that. Wolves did at least go up. It looks like there was a villager pull, so the Muslim was trying to sneak through here. Now the horsemen arriving. This actually just might be two villagers lost for the Muslim. You can see with how quickly he builds the palace at gate. He can move out. The horsemen as well. Uh-oh. You need to leave. You need to leave right now. At least turn on the horsemen. Construct will be complete. And then there'll be a chase down. Question is whether you're quick enough to get out. And the answer is no. Viper. He sends even horsemen around. Uh, even more horsemen around on the other side. So now it looks like Ben should end up losing these two villagers. Unless no. No Viper. Come on. Oh, he realizes too late. That would have been big, actually. Sniping two villagers there would have put them neck and neck eco-wise. And then, of course, the sacred sites that you're going to get your hands on at least one of will give you an edge. Love all these out wars by Viper as well. Just denying a lot of wiggle room. And now he's the one who has that kind of dictatorial flow around the west side. Little does he know that the Muslim was able to sneak in two horsemen and the Khan. But now they're stuck here, so you can't even actively raid with the Khan. 
And that is kind of a deal breaker. Usually when you go for Magadai, you want to have the Khan involved in the formation. I think it's a very big deal to using these units just because they're so flimsy. So if you get outmaneuvered or you find yourself out of position, having that maneuver arrow is a big deal. If your opponent has an eco line out of position, having that attack speed arrow is a phenomenally big deal. Because in Magadai, although they do drive by and do decent damage, it's only seven damage at this stage of the game up against a, a 50 health unit or 75 in this situation as Viper didn't hang around. He didn't get greedy. He did go for the textiles. Horsemen are starting to stack up. And these outposts are going to start to struggle. Once Viper gets up to about 10 horsemen, he can just burn them down. And then he can consolidate control on the central sacred site. He's already getting the southern one, so now the gold trickle will begin. And Viper, look at the numbers right now. This is actually really good. Just one sacred site, if he's not spending gold, with the demand on his food as he builds horsemen, he should be able to naturally just boom into Castle Age in the next three minutes. Meanwhile, when you look at the Muslim's base, he's going up already. He raced forward. The Magadai, he didn't hard invest into it anymore. Uvu is at least going to be burnt down on the backside, so he won't be able to double produce into the Lancers. But make no mistakes, folks. The Muslim is pretty cozy. Makes his way up to the castle. It's going to be a problem. The village is going to be sacrificed. The Uvu's still going down. So no double production. Actually, yes, he just about clicked it. So I think he tapped the hammer once, and that just about gave the wiggle room. So he will get two lances out quickly. But it does cost him dearly for it. And while this is happening, more wolves going up. Viper is stripping options away. This is really cheesy, but quite effective. It does focus fire upon your base and only your base, but... It alleviates any concerns around relic gathering, right? Now, the Muslim's not in a situation where he can sneak out and get the relics on the outskirts. He can only gather one in the center, and then he has to fight directly into you. Meanwhile, fight on the northern flank. As a scholar is trying to dodge out the damage, and only one horseman can attack him, the positioning for Viper. He needs to target the horseman now, though. Khan forced away. One strike left to get rid of him. Meanwhile, the scholar goes down. Nice strike just in time to Muslim. Slightly better micro there. Viper missed an opportunity. Could have switched over sooner and would have been able to get rid of the horseman. One stab difference was all that was in it. Now the Khan's stuck here. Still not useful. <laughs> this is actually better than killing the Khan. This is truly better than killing the Khan. That you kill the Khan, he spawns again in two minutes and he's able to assist in the big fight. Right now, he's stuck back here. Unless you burn down these palisades, he's not getting it out. I actually much prefer leaving the Khan alive like this. And remember that, that the Muslim can't delete it. This is actually such a high-level play out of, the, of Viper. He doesn't finish off the Khan. The only reason he was attacking him was to try and prevent him from killing the, the priest. And now that he's lost that priest, the only value he has here is letting the Khan exist. Because if he's existing here, he's not giving those maneuver arrows on the offensive. This is really cool. Viper, of course, did make his way up to Castle Age in the meantime. Is now going towards the home blade. So while you have a movement speed buff on the side of the Mongols with your lances, the attack speed dam uh, the attack damage rather is definitely going to be in favor of Viper. He doesn't waste any time. Shifts immediately to the lances to counter out exactly what his opponent is doing. Income per minute is pretty damn good for the bald man. And of course, the reason being is you know the step read out pulses him up. The gold doesn't need as many people there. Food is still very healthy because he's on sheep. Meanwhile, on the other side, you can see the Viper, he's starting to stretch himself a little bit thin, shifting across now onto Deer. The Khan, he did kill him in the end. We'll turn onto the Lancers here. Lancers having the advantage over Viper's troops, but not for long as the Horseman will scare him away. You need to be careful about giving too much ground as well. Unless you can get a few crossbowmen ready, you could be raided actively into your eco lines. For now, Viper, interested more in that midfield, needs to find a way onto this sacred site. That could be a big deal. Luckily for him, this outpost doesn't have a spring upgrade, so it shouldn't be hard to snipe. In fact, I'm kind of surprised that Viper isn't getting rid of these. Like, it's only Aris lit upgrades, so you're not going to take much damage. I guess you can wait for another five horses, and at that stage, it's very easy to torch down without losing any troops at all. And it looks like he's finally going back for that sacred site. But you can see, now the Muslim is going to renew the push out. Wants to get access to this area. And Viper ah, he might be in a position where he can't do anything about it. He will at least take the relics in the center. Looks for the keep over the central sacred site. Big play here. And now also to Muslim revealing his hand. Revealing that he's going into the relics. Exactly why he wants to torch down these palisades. Because he wants to access the double relic. But he'll only get one if that. As Viper sneaks in and runs away with the goodies. Let's keep. 
cannot be stopped. So looks like Viper will be marking the center of the map as Delhi territory. Relic's already about to go up to free. This is the Viper we expected to see, man. This is what he does so well. He's oppressive when it comes to this. Remember that he arrived in Castle Age later, but because of his focus on getting these walls up, he denied any ability for the Muslim to play into Relic's instantly. And although the Muslim will eventually get his hand on the Relic of the backside, it will only be one Relic, right? I don't think he's banked another one. No. So he double produced the Shaman. He's only going to get one for his trouble. Meanwhile, Viper will get four. In fact, where is that fourth one now? I know it's yeah, yeah, it's come back here, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So no way you're likely to intercept that. Maybe if the Muslim's lucky with his positioning here. However, he's going to get counterattacked. The wraparound coming in from the lancers and spears. Garrison forced out. This Viper has to get all of his people into safety. More villagers being pulled back. And Viper, oh. Does the Muslim realize this could be big? If the Muslim realizes that there's not enough eco here and he looks around the back, but no, he goes the wrong way. And if Viper does this right with the wall lol, this could be clutch. It forces a fight. The Muslim, he has to turn on this. He can't just run away. He'll try to shift away now. Maybe you can snipe out the scholar, but it might not be worthwhile. Second round of strikes needed it will cost him some more damage and maybe one more Lancer. But it will delay Viper getting the fourth relic. It is an inevitability at this stage, though. There's no way you can sneak in. And that keep still very much unanswered in the center. The Muslim starting to build up the forces. Really needs to get into siege, but hasn't got siege engineering improved. Doesn't have a siege workshop either. So this keep is completely unanswered that Viper is positioned here. And I love that he's actually done this as well. The mosque on the front line so you can get the research tech quicker. This opens up the opportunity to TC boom once you get your hands on the village fortresses. In five minutes, Viper is going to begin to boom hard. And it's not often you say that in a, a Delhi match up about the Delhi player, right? Thinking towards Imperial, but it will open up naturally when he scales his eco. Something that right now the Muslim isn't doing because he's still playing only one TC. Not only that, by the way, it's one TC with your opponent about to get four relics. So that's going to be effectively 10 extra villages for him. And you can talk about how great the step readout is. Yes, but it can only do so much for you. The issue with putting too much pressure on, or too much emphasis onto this step readout as well is you drain your initial gold veins and all of a sudden find yourself in no man's land in contested territory. Tower Elephant, a frustration right now for the Muslim. Crossbows are going to arrive though and the Elephant has to run away. About to be a very bad trade for Viper. But a new keep goes up, so this will be a stabilizing point. Might lose one of the Elephants, but might be worthwhile if he gets a few more of these Lancers and it looks like that's going to be the case. The dive coming out. Maybe to the detriment of the Muslim. So it looks like two more, make that three more lances maybe even are going to go down. Viper even teasing him with the new elephant. It's like, oh no, you killed my elephant. Got a new one. Meanwhile on the front. All in all, almost done. Sacred Sight decapped. Do you need to worry about that Springwood upgrade now? Looks like he's going for Sacred Sight. Wants that 150 gold per minute. Skull account. Looking reasonable right now. As he has got six actively researching. Wait, no. I'm reading that wrong, aren't I? How many skulls has he got total? He's got to have a few garrisons. So three back at home. It is just four total, yes. Numbers right there, you idiot pigeon. Viper not looking stupid, though. Viper looking pretty maintained with what he's doing. And Spearman even guarding the flanks in case there's some sneaky move coming out from Ben. In fact, I don't know if he sees this. No, he doesn't have the vision. So the creep of the outpost might be successful. Could be a big deal as the Muslim's trying to go around the keep. Everyone wants to be uh, you know, a Magano line enthusiast, don't they? Just go around. This right here, this is the Netherlands for the people who didn't know their World War II history. It's a problem in the defense. Okay, this is a very confusing history. The Delhi are not the French. I guess they had a colony down there, though, so... Kind of counts. <laughs> Outpost now going down, though. As soon as you establish on the south side, you're losing your control in the north. And now, first upgrade done. Village Fortress is next. A minute and a half away, but the traction trebuchets are a problem. A few villagers have been pulled to keep this alive, though. The siege workshop now being built up. So Viper finally prepping to get through the defenses. The Muslims building up the center, but it's going to be a hard fight. Multi-outposts up. Traction trebuchet is definitely a frustration. 
And it is Siege Engineering improved, so you can quickly build up the Siege Army if you're the Muslim. Meanwhile, Outpost has been spotted. And will be torched down before you can really do anything with it. And instead of hanging around with the cavalry, Viper is looking to go in on the eco and wail upon his Mongol opponent here. Siege Workshop. Here's the power of the Scholars, by the way. This is where it gets ridiculous, right? We've talked before about how good it is that you're able to pay 75 gold to get a second military infrastructure building 150 wood. It's even better in the Siege Workshop. Pay 300 wood, pay an extra 75 gold, and all of a sudden you have two Siege Workshops worth of production. And Sprinkles now moving forward. Wrapping with the Horseman. What? I can't believe he done that. Viper, that was a big throwaway force. He at least wrapped with a small contingent of Lancers to the south side, but... I don't know why he threw the troops away like that. I think he's overreacting to the Trebs. He's pulling more villagers to try and keep this dream alive. He needs the Sprinkles to start targeting out the tracks of Trebuchet soon. He needs free to insta-kill as well. Remember, they do 120 damage against Siege. 320 health on those tracks of Trebs. Might be forced to make a move a little bit sooner. Starts to wheel out. Needs to be careful because this will put him in range of the outpost. Luckily for him, the fourth one is just arrow slits. Lance is still being a pain in the ass. He has spotted the movement onto the back gold vein. So Viper is a smart cookie. He'll read this for what it is. He realizes that the Muslim is extracting a lot of gold and running out of veins. Although not in his forehead, as this game in the next five minutes could get very stressful for the Muslim if he doesn't find a way out onto new resources. This keep is just not going down. He'll even get the tech complete. And this is actually really good because before this, right, Viper right now is sacrificing villagers' gathering rates to repair this keep. Now that he gets that tech up complete, all of a sudden he can push villagers from here, from here, from here, and it's not a loss anymore. It's an investment in keeping one of your TCs alive, which is also a, a very solid defense point. Ellie's moving in. Need to be careful. The Lancer wrap. Springles are going to be exposed as well. Spearman getting in position is going to force Voldemort away. The Muslim will lose one Lancer for that. And the Springles come in with the repairs as well to keep them alive. One Treb's going to be traded out. And the pool of villagers here trying to keep the dream up. Keep on fire, but not down just yet. Springles wheeling in once again, looking to snipe out another. There are three here, so they can instant target down. And there it is, another one falling. The damage from the traction trebuchet is not high enough. Remember, they do less damage to the counterweights. And now three dead trebuchets. No way of approaching Viper. Is playing to Muslim like a fiddle here. Elephant's buffering his opponent away. Spearman pushing forward as well. Not that many Lancers to chase in. Springer will look for the trade out in the last one. Not able to get it, but with only one trebuchet left. It looks like the keep's going to be repaired. And Viper is going to stabilize in the center, forcing a fullback out of the Muslim. And he will deny the new outpost from going up around the side as the elephants will move across now. This Viper, right now, he's in a good position. The issue now for the Muslim to fix, and I love that he's gone for the TC to try and help with this, uh, is he needs to get to Imperial. He actually needs to get a stable army and then push Imperial. But right now, gold's going to be a limiting factor. Remember that he's extracting this final vein that was worth 6k total because he has a step readout he's dropping out fat. But he's invested a lot of that into lances and crossbows and also siege. So he doesn't actually have the means at his disposal to rush Imperial without sacrificing any sort of military resistance. Or Viper. He might be able to slow the cruise towards it at this rate. He's going to boom hard on the eco count now. Switching up into farms, and I love this. Farms around the keeps. Remember, this is a TC in every way now. It can drop off. You can build villages from it. You can even build scouts from it. It is going to make Viper quite frustrating to catch up to now. Because, well, what? We've got four keeps. Maybe three. I think it's three. Three keeps and a TC. So it's two TCs versus four. And you can see that starting to come into the picture when you look at the eco side of things. The Muslim renewing the treb line. Not a cheap investment, mind you. You see, slightly cheaper than the the countweight trebuchets. Countweight trebuchets being 500 gold, 200, no, 500 wood, 250 gold. It was 400 wood. It's 400 wood. Yeah, 500. Yeah, I was right. 500 wood, 250 gold. In comparison, traction trebuchets cheaper for good reason, as they have less range, free, less tar range, in fact, and notably less damage. You see this here. 
100 base, 200 extra to buildings or ships. Compare that to the 100 base and then 450 bonus against buildings or ships. Now, we don't have to worry about the latter there. No ships on this map. The only thing sinking here is the outpost line that the Muslim has invested in. And also the health being lower means you can actually target them out, Trev on Trev, quite effectively. Right now, it's just a race on both sides to pop cap to then be able to float the resources for Imperial. A race that it looks like Viper might be winning here. And Elephant's just kind of forcing weird knee-jerk reactions out of the Muslim. Yam could chase this down. That is a lot of crossbows. Yeah, Elephant's keep backing up. The formation shuffle your way away. And the brilliant part is it's just a good trade. Like, you kill one or two units, and then you heal up the Scholars. I actually like the Viper's doing this, because it's also drawing attention to the North, so the Trebs are less exposed. And they just get to fire away. Traction trip. Oh, not enough just yet. You need another counterweight trebuchet out, and then you can probably kill this. He's definitely trying, though. Springles, this sneaking. Wait, he doesn't know. Oh, by the time he sees it, it's going to be too late. So Traction Trev gone. Springle gets a freebie. Elephant's now moving in to round down the outpost. And uh, I mean, you are going to struggle to defend this. He's just baiting him in because he wants him to fight. Because one side is healing, the other is not, right? This isn't a cruel type play. This isn't a mass shaman play coming out from the Mongol. Instead, everything lost hurts. And he wants to keep causing these losses because it forces the Muslim to hang around in castle longer while Viper cracks pop cap and then looks to eventually scale into Imperial. And here we go, the head pats come out. Spearman to turn the Lancers away. Crossbows not firing upon those elephants. And uh oh, the crossbows are going to be exposed to the fire now. A lot of damage coming out. Remember, it's double 15 damage bow fire coming out from these elephants. Adds up quick against the crossbows. And the head patters are a frustrating detail for the Muslim to deal with. Oppressive detail, in fact. And here they come, healing again. He'll start to focus fire now, just trying to get through one. But he can't! The heals, they're too strong! When they're all in range, it's just not good enough. Oh, yo, yo. Trebs in the meantime, getting rid of that outpost network. Not many remaining for Demuzum at that stage. Losing the mobility could be a critical issue for him. And you're starting to see the power of Scholars with Herbal Medicine in the late game, folks. Like we pointed out before, it's a discount as well. Only paying 75 gold per. Scholars, of course, quite chunky because he did get the increase out of the party, giving them an extra 40, putting them up to 130 health per Scholar. That means they don't even die quickly. And this is starting to look a little bit grim. The Muslim, he's trying to save for it. You can see he's getting so close, but... It's the pop cap. It's never being uh, like maintained, right? He's always being chipped away at. Like the, the Muslim, he's doing a good job of slowly saving for Imperial, but Viper's doing an even better job of forcing him to reinvest. Every single move is intentional with these elephants. It looks dodgy because the first few times he's going in, he's not really killing much, but it's forcing reactions. It's chipping away at the military count and then forcing the Muslim to just shift resources away to try and reinforce his lines. And that's happened again. Look at the gold. That's a big deal right there. Like, now gold is limiting. He needs to get onto a new line. He does at least breach the wood and look to move out. But you can already see a move from Viper. Viper's moving across ahead of him. He's blocking him out. Oh, my. Oh, my, oh, my. And the Spears against only Lancers? I, I don't think you can take this fight. Brace. Oh, no, and he realizes it. The Muslim's going to be chased upon. The village has been targeted out as well. Spread out here. Maybe offers up an opportunity for the Muslim. He will overwhelm, but it's going to cost him some of his villages. And these villages do not have textiles. So that definitely stinks. And now he knows. He knows exactly what you're doing over here. Viper now has a choice. Do I send a vanguard to raid you? Can you get the outposts up quick enough? Even if you build the outposts, when do you get the sprinkles? Not to see. It looks like it is. Yeah, he's going to harass it. Viper, look at the amount of stables he's now building. He wants to head over there. Stables and archery ranges. This is going to be a quick plow through on the step readout line. And I have no doubt that this is where the Muslim will start to struggle. Gives over more ground. More of the outposts going down. He's running out of places to run and hide. And I mean, I'm worried because food is looking good. If he goes to that tech up, though, which he desperately wants, like you're going to drain your food deposits. And if these pastures start to burn off, you're not going to have surplus sheep to extract from. 
traction trebuchets with no match for the counterweights, baby. Now up to six. This siege army feeling irrelevant right now. Maybe a nuclear deterrent into Muslim's eyes, but not doing anything productive for him. Nine elephants now on the front line for Viper. More villies being pulled. Needs all that gold right now, ASAP. The income's been pathetic, 100 gold per minute. It's just been that relic that he's got banned. Meanwhile, Viper is building up vast reserves, and now because he's pop capped, it is time. He's underway. Palace of the Sultan. He's going to beat the Muslim to the punchline. And he does so not from a position of weakness, but from a position of power. Exactly what you need if you want to go Imperial as the Delhi. Balls break. Moves in further. And this is what we were worried about. Like, look how many passes are dead. 150 wood each, by the way. It's easy to forget because they added more tree lines into Altai. But wood is a very budgeted resource on this map. Replacing these is going to be pricey. Also, where are you going to put them? Also, how are you going to float the food cost initially past this? Even if you stabilize your gold now and get what you need for Imperial, your food is going to be lacking. And it means that if you lose one army, you could lose the game. And that's why Viper is very slow and methodical about this. He sees there's no rush. He sees the, the values being given, the amount of stuff he's being allowed to attack. Now Lance is on the cheeky elephant play. He went in. Lance's are going to punish him for that. Viper, maybe send uh, a few more troops than this. I'm not sure one's going to cut it. Right now, Viper is cutting deep. Up in Imperial. All the tech ups underway. You can see oh, even the archers' upgrades coming out for veterancy. Uh, it's going to take a while for these ones. Though. You can see, Jesus, 15 minutes. It's because he hasn't got any scholars. He's pop capped, right? Like, he's got them on the front line. He would benefit from having a few back at home still. And the madrasas as well. He needs the universities. Like, remember, you can garrison up to 20 scholars in him. It would be a big edge he'd have. But he doesn't want to give up the pressure. He doesn't want to sacrifice the elephants freely. They are pricey. For the moment. The Muslim not really paying an ultimate price on this step readout. Is allowed to freely maintain his control over it. But the madrasas are now going up. And this is where the scholars might have a different duty in this game. But they have plenty of duties that they can fulfill. Get you elephants. They can get you better research. And Tithe Barns as well. Oh my. This is going to be big, actually. Tithe Barns are free. You're saving, like, I think it's 500 gold, if I recall correctly. On top of that, you're now getting, for that price, 120 food, 120 wood. And then ignore the 30 stone. It's actually 20 stone every minute. So an extra 80 stone as well. Like, I... Viper's just going to outboom him. Like, economically, he's going to outsustain. Ah, uh, the Muslim, his window is closing fast. He needs to gain ground really soon. It's just hard to see how you get that ground now. Your composite is a little bit flimsy when it comes to the dive. Horsemen seem good against the elephants, but they're going to struggle against the static defenses. Viper, he may need to prep for a switch up. The good news, however, is because he played out in the center, look at all the ground he has. Like, he has a lot of full military production lines, so he's not exactly going to struggle to replace whatever's lost or transition in the middle of a fight. These reps. Are they really? Yeah, they want the shots. Wait, what? Drunk driving? Hello? Didn't want to get sniped by the Springholds. Viper is still singing with a small group of lances. Like, he could actually do some damage. It could go unnoticed. And these are arrows that upgrade, so he wouldn't insta lose to the Springles either. Trebs. Forcing them out up. Traction Trebs did move in, but the counterweight trebuchets can snipe them from out of range anyway, so that's going to force a back off by the Muslim. The Muslim, of course, did make his way up into Imperial. Question mark is how long does he wait? Because the step freed out is doing good work right now. It's good God's work at this point. But only 4,000 gold left over, 6,000 total to extract. Means you are running out of resources. Viper just infinitesimally scaling at this point. Has drained practically all the gold on his side of the map. But of course, always has that infinite gold coming out from the four relics he's banked compared to the one that the Muslim has. And you can see the difference of surplus. In fact, he has more surplus in reserve than there is left for the Muslim to tap. Yes, he could try to play the south side, but I feel like that is going to be hotly contested. In fact, I said he drained. He hasn't. Yeah, he's still in the center ones. They just, they've been smuggled away over the, the red icons on the map. 
So you still got double gold veins tapping. In fact, they are neck and neck in terms of reserves that need to be tapped still. But in terms of reserves that are already in your economy, damn, Viper's vastly ahead. The Muslim pushing forward now. These keeps are a frustration, though. Krebs sogging out the tractions. Easily to take them. It's just a little bit too easy to take them down, really. And the cannon fire. He just can't target it. This feels like frustration more than logical choice by Demosum. He doesn't have any options right now, though. The traction trebuchets could not win this for him. And these horsemen and lancers most definitely won't. The keeps are just too tanky. Especially with the resistance against Torchfire. Remember, he got all the upgrades as you do at this stage of the Delhi. Everything is just free, so why not take everything? Treb's fallen. Resistance too high. The Muslim with the throwaway army, really. Still keeps a, a healthy amount of them alive, but you can just see it's a slow, methodical approach for Viper. No rush for him to end this game. I mean, what the Muslim? At least he has wood up here when he runs out of the gold, but the gold is drying up fast. Viper with a heavy investment. Where did all his gold go? He traded it. He traded in the wood. Or was this? No, no, that wasn't wood. That was just the production. Oh my god, yeah, look at the numbers. The amount of elephants now. Holy crap, we're playing Zoo Tycoon. Well, it's definitely elephant mating season. That much is for sure. 11 war elephants. 11 tower elephants. Those war elephants having 1,700 HP. Yeah, good luck with this one. You're going to need it. To those about to die, we salute you. Which means we ain't saluting any elephants today. It's like a weird warp version of Planet of the Apes on its Planet of the Elephants. The humans went extinct. They were enslaved. Oh my god, he's in. It's gonna force the fight. Too many elephants. The Muslim tries to stand his ground, but the peppering is gonna start to stack up upon him. The cannon upgrades to try and assist him in the outpost on the front line. But you see he just chases deeper because he understands he can throw away a lot more than the Muslim can. Benny boy just tried to stay alive, to start a step back to try and just trade out one by one. But the crossbowman count is shrinking. Elephant count being somewhat diminished, but he's still got eight of each. It's just ridiculous at this stage. And Viper, he deleted his entire village account to do this. Was it worth it? It's the big question mark, the question to be answered. Treb's moving in, only one Treb. I, I don't know if this was an over-calibration by Viper. I, can you end the game? He's going for the TC now. He's wiping out most of the crossbowmen. He's denied all of the food. There's no food anymore on either side. And remember that Viper is getting passive generation of new elephants all the while this is happening. And new keeps being constructed. Viper, I, I mean, this was insane, but I think he might have done it. I think it's good enough. The Bombard's coming out. The natural predator has emerged against the elephants, but with only two of them in the field, I just don't think it's good enough. These war elephants were too tanky, and the Bombards are not. And the Muslim surely sees the writing on the wall now. The trebuchet is unanswered. His village account is high, yes, but his military influence has diminished down to next to zero at this stage. And with no food gathering going on, he can't replace what's lost here. Game looks like it's done. Viper, with quite the ballsy elephant play, will take the win.